All right, the last two on these, they're, they're kind of, they, they up the difficulty on these, especially number 27, but 26 definitely is a jump up as well. The functions f and g are defined by the given equations where x is greater than or equal to zero. Which of the following equations displays as a constant or coefficient the maximum value of the function it defines where x is greater than or equal to zero? And we have these two um, functions. We have f of x, which is 33 times 0 0.4 to the power of x plus 3. Then g of x, which is 33 times 0 0.16 times 0 0.4 to the power of x minus 2. Okay, I really recommend using your graphing calculator on this one. So we have this exponential, you know, we have this, this function with this, the x should say the x is in the exponent, would be the more accurate way of saying that. And just to give you an idea of what you're doing and what you're looking at. Um, because when you have something that's to a power of x, and you've also got these 0.4s, which are uh, fractions, essentially it's two-fifths, it's, it's better to get a graphing calculator so you know what you're, you're dealing with. If you have a basic function where x is in the exponent, like say 2 to the power of x, it's going to look something like this. You have where it's approaching zero going left and it's going up into the sky going right. But when you start adding different things in the exponent and you start adding uh, fractions in the base, it can be a little tricky to know with certainty whether this is um, this is a, a function where it is going like this or if it's a function that's going like this. And you have the graphing calculator there. Don't guess, just use the graphing calculator, either your own or Desmos. In this case, because of those fractions, that 0 0.4 that's in the base, uh, they're both going like this. They're a little different. They're a little, I'm not drawing this correctly um, at all. I'm trying. It's very hard on the screen. And I am not drawing this to scale. I'm really not. I'm just giving you an overall idea of what it's going to look like. So once you see this in the graphing calculator, you put both of these in and be very careful. This is one little tip I'm going to give you on this. Be very careful with when you're inputting things into a graphing calculator to make sure that it fully understands that, like, say, this x plus 3 attaches only to the 0 0.4, because um, I don't know whether you're going to be using your own graphing calculator or Desmos, but Desmos, it's pretty you know it's pretty clear you can actually see it going exponential some graphing calculators they make you use that little carrot to say the exponential if that is the case if you're having to write it out like 33 times 0 0.4 you do a little carrot x plus 3 just as a little side hint to make sure you don't um, enter it incorrectly if you want to be extra careful if you don't trust your calculator Put a parentheses around that x plus 3 and then put another parentheses around all that so it knows that is all together and the 33 is by itself that's just a little calculator tip for you because yeah don't want to mess up and get a question wrong just because of um some typing and then the graphing calculator not understanding what you need we don't want that to happen okay so you've typed these things into your graphing calculator and you've got a graph that looks somewhat like this so you know the shape of these two things now, let's go back and read the question again. What do they want us to know? They say it's where x is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so part of this graph doesn't count. Anything where x is less than 0, all this area here, the negative, I'm trying to get as close as possible, all this negative doesn't matter to this question. It's like, okay, so that, that we know right there. All right. Then it says, where x is greater than or equal to 0, which of the following equations displays as a constant or coefficient the maximum value of the function it defines? Let's look at that second part first, the maximum value of the function. Both of these functions that we've got here, they're starting on the y-axis, and then they are going down towards that x-axis, they are approaching it. They are approaching zero, they're never crossing it, but they're getting lower and lower and lower forever. So where is the maximum value for both of these? For both of them, it's where x is zero, right on that y-intercept. Every other value is going to be lower than that. Those are the maximums. So at this point, 
before we go any further, we need to determine the maximum value of both of those. Now, if you have a graphing calculator, you can go over here and like really zoom, zoom, zoom in and see if you can figure out what the values are at those two points. If you can do that accurately and you can get a zero and you can find out what, you know, what the Y value is at both of those, if you can do that accurately, that's great. Absolutely. That is great. Um, another way to do it, which is, you know, absolute is to put zero, since we know X is zero at this place, is we can put zero into both of these equations and see what we get. Either way works. If you can um, zoom in enough and very accurately say what is the value of Y when X is zero, that works. I'm also going to show you the way when you plug in um, zero in these two, what you get. So, okay, first one, F of X, 33 times 0 0.4 to the power of X plus three. So when X is zero, that's just going to be 33 times 0 0.4 to the power of three, right? Doo -doo, the power of three. And if we do that math, if we do 0 0.4 to the power of three times 33, then we will get 2.112. All right, remember that? We're gonna come back to it in a second. All right, second one, I'm gonna plug in zero. 33 times 0 0.16 times 0 0.4 to the power of X minus two. Okay, and I should have written that. <laughs> I should have written that down lower. Shame on me. Clearly, that was poor planning on my part. So let's redo that. 33 times 0 0.16 times 0 0.4 to the power to the power of x minus 2. All right, and we want x to be 0. So 0 minus 2 is just negative 2. All right, so what happens when we do that math? If you didn't have a calculator, frankly, this is one I think it's almost easier just to do it without a calculator. 0 0.4 to the power of negative 2. Anytime it's to the power of a negative, it means 1 over that. So 1 over 0 0.4 squared. 0 0.4 times 0 0.4 is just 4 times 4, or 16. And then you go, all right, there's two decimal places. Dun, dun, 0.16. Me, because I do math so often, I'm doing math all day, obviously, with this YouTube channel and tutoring and such. That's easier for me just to look at that and go, oh, yeah, that's 0.16. I, I fully acknowledge that is not true for everyone. You have your calculator. If you need to use your calculator, go for it. It is there for you. All right, so we know that this is now 0.16. Doesn't want me to write. There we go, 0.16. So now I have 33 times 0 0.16 times 1 over 0 0.16. Those are going to cancel out. It's like 5 times 1 fifth, 6 times 1 sixth, 8 times 1 eighth. All of those are equal to 1. So 0 0.16 times 1 over 0 0.16 is equal to 1. So that all cancels out, just becomes 1. 33 is my answer when I do all that. Why doesn't it want me to write? There we go. All that equals just 33. Okay. Now that we've done this math, let's go back and find out what exactly. It says, which of the following equations displays as a constant or coefficient the maximum value of the function? All right, what that means is this result that we got, 2.112, that is the maximum value there. 33, that's the maximum value there. If I go back and look at this original one, is 2.112 anywhere in there as a constant or coefficient in that equation? No, there is no 2.112 anywhere in that function. On to the second one, g of x. When I found the maximum of that one, when x is greater than or equal to zero, I got 33. Looking at that uh, function, is 33 anywhere in there? Sure thing, there it is, 33. So it is not true for one, it is true for number two, so the answer is B, two only. Be sure to head over to my stores on Spreadshop and Etsy for math-related merch, worksheets, classroom decor, and more. And if this was helpful or useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.